Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today's lecture will be about truncated pyramids. It's a continuation of the pyramids uh, topic. Um, now, obviously, this is part of the uh, course of advanced mathematics for um, high school students. It's presented on unizor.com. That's where I suggest you to um, watch this lecture from because there are notes and in this particular lecture actually the notes are quite extensive so um, I do suggest you to look at the notes before or after um, listening to this lecture. Alright, so this is about truncated pyramid and first we have to explain what is truncated pyramid. Well, that's actually quite simple. If you have, let's say, a pyramid like this, quadrilateral pyramid with some kind of a quadrilateral uh, at the base. Well, truncated means we just cut off the top of it, basically. That's it. And whatever is left is truncated pyramid. Now, let me be a little bit more specific. <coughs> so, let's say we have a pyramid like this. Now, next, what I will do is I pick any point, let's say this one, A prime, on SA edge, and draw a plane parallel to the base plane. Let's say this is the base plane. And now I'm cutting with a plane parallel to beta. Let's call it gamma. And as a result, my pyramid will be cut like this. Something like this. That's what plain gamma will cut off the pyramid. Now this is supposed to be invisible. Right? Okay. And intersection of this plane with SB I will call B prime with C C prime and with D D prime. So A B C D A prime B prime C prime D prime this figure which is left after I um, cut off the top using this plane parallel to the beta. This is called a truncated pyramid. That's the definition. Now very elementary properties. Uh, first of all, since this plane is parallel to this one, and you can consider SAB plane as um, transcending these two, um, and you know the theorem, if you have two parallel planes and you have another one which transcends both of them, then the resulting intersections of this um, uh, plane with, with the parallel planes will be parallel lines. So A, B and A prime, B prime are parallel to each other. Because this plane is parallel to this plane and this is the plane which intersects them both. Similarly, BC parallel to B prime, C prime, etc. So all corresponding um, edges will be parallel to each other. Which in particular means that AB, B prime, A prime is a trapezoid, obviously, as well as all other sides. So um, sides, uh, side faces of truncated pyramid are trapezoids, right? That's that simple. Now, let's consider triangle SA prime B prime and SAB. Now, since AB and AB prime are parallel to each other, these two triangles are similar with the um, scaling center at S, at apex, and the factor basically being uh, SA divided by SA prime. Now, 
that's exactly the same factor s between sb and sb prime and now if you consider triangle sbc and sb prime c prime you see that the sc and s uh, sc and sc prime also have the same relationship also are of the factor f so this factor f is shared among, among all of these guys because the factor of this is equal to factor of this factor of this is equal to factor of these and factor of these is equal to factor of sg and uh, sd prime so they're all the same and same exactly ratio for a b relative to a b prime So this is a very interesting situation. Everything in the small pyramid and the large pyramid um, is proportional with the same uh, scaling factor F and center S. In particular, it means that not only every linear is proportional, also the areas uh, of corresponding pieces of these pyramids are proportional but the proportionality is f squared remember this so the area of let's say a b c d divided by area of a prime b prime c prime c d prime is equal to f squared so remember when we were talking about similarity in the three-dimensional world linear um, elements are proportional to some factor and aerial um, um, quantities like area of a triangle or area of quadrilateral they are proportional to f square we did discuss this so that's very important because we will use it obviously now what else is um, is important here okay so let's draw an altitude from s down to H and obviously it intersects the top quadrilateral as well at point A H prime now my statement is that H S H uh, uh, ratio to S H prime is also the same F now how can I prove that well, it's really very easy. Um, it's uh, basically you can consider uh, S A H plane, which intersects two parallel planes, beta and gamma, and that's why A H is parallel to H A prime H prime, and therefore they are proportional and proportionality is exactly the same as SA to SA to SA prime so again triangle SAH and SA prime H prime are similar and you have the same proportionality between these two lines as before so it extends to to these now SH I will call lowercase h and SH prime lowercase h prime these are altitudes of the big and the small pyramid all right and these two guys area of the basis i will call lowercase s and uppercase s i mean lowercase s and lowercase s prime okay so, right now, I would like to concentrate on these two. So we have big and small pyramid. We have their areas, uh, areas of their basis, related as f square, and um, their altitudes are related as as plane f. Now, I think I have mentioned everything. Uh, to start talking about the volume of the truncated pyramid. Now, 
what's very easy right now is to say that the volume of the truncated pyramid is basically the difference between the volume of the big pyramid and the small pyramid which I'm cutting out. So basically, V is equal to one third SH minus one third S prime H prime, where S is area of the ABCD, H is an altitude of the pyramid, S prime is area of A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and H prime is the altitude of that small pyramid. That's fine, but it's actually, it's not good enough. And let me explain you why. Now, you see, if we are talking about truncated pyramid and we would like to express its volume in some terms, I better use the terms which belong to truncated pyramid, not to some composition of this truncated pyramid and something on the top, which I don't really have, etc. So, I would like to express the volume of the truncated pyramid in terms of elements of the truncated pyramid not the elements of the pyramid which does not exist actually so what does exist well the what does exist is the um, uh, the altitude of the uh, truncated pyramid itself h h prime let's call it a so what i would like to express uh, the volume not in terms of s which is a characteristic of a truncated pyramid, S prime, which is also a characteristic of a truncated pyramid, and not in terms of H and H prime, but in terms of A, which is basically the height of the uh, pyramid itself, which happens to be, by the way, H minus H prime, right? So the height of the truncated pyramid is difference between the height of the big pyramid and the small pyramid. So. I don't like this. I would like to express instead of V in terms of S, S prime, and A, not H and H prime. Question is, is it possible? Well, let's just think about it. I don't really need this because right now it's, it, we are in the algebra world. Look at this. This one this one okay so we have proportionality between areas proportionality between this Now, let's consider these two, three guys. What's known, what's unknown? I would like to express the volume in terms of um, S, S prime, and A. So these are kind of known variables. F is not known, H and H prime is not known. So we have three unknowns and three equations. So, what if I will solve these equations and I will get the values of H and H prime in terms of S, S prime and A and substitute it here? Well, that would be my final result and final formula where my volume is expressed in terms of S, S, S prime and A. No H and no H prime. So, that's all I want to do. I would like to exclude H and H prime from this formula using these three uh, uh, equations with three variables which I can solve uh, 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 solve for, for, for f and h and h prime all right well okay so for f actually it's very simple it's square root of s divided by s prime so that's it and I don't really need this equation anymore Also, what I will do, I will express A plus uh, H1, I will express S uh, as A plus H prime. So, what I, what, what I can do right now is, I can actually uh, substitute, now from here, 
I can actually take uh, if I will put H prime here instead of H that would be F is equal to A plus H prime over H prime which is equal to H prime plus 1 right from which I can derive H prime is equal to F minus 1 A divided by F minus 1 but I know F so that's this and now I can do this So you see, I have H and H prime expressed in terms of A and S and S and S prime. So that's all I need actually. I have to substitute into this formula, well, and go to simplify it somehow if I can. Right? So let's do it. So what do I need? I really need this line and this line. I don't need F anymore because F does not participate in my volume formula. So the only thing is, let me just simplify it a little bit, this one. H is equal to, if I will use common denominator, it would be A times square root minus A and plus A. So it will be A square root of S over S prime divided by square root of S over S prime minus 1. So these are two values for H and h prime which i'm going to substitute into this formula and what do i have v equals one third s h which is a uh, square root of s over s prime divided by square root of s over s prime minus one minus one third of s prime h prime which is a over the same denominator so that's all i have to simplify so from now on it's just technicality uh, okay so what do i do well let me just make very quick thing so i will multiply by square root of s prime both nominator and denominator so what i will have is um, now a over three would be outside a and a and one third and one third is all outside the parentheses now inside i will have so if i will multiply by square root of uh, s prime i will have on the top I will have s square root of s on the bottom I will have square root of s minus square root of s prime right if I multiply by square root of s prime this is this and this will be this minus and the denominator actually is the same so I can use the same here uh, s prime I multiply by square root of s prime and denominator will be the same as this one so that's basically my my result right well I can obviously simplify it even more because very simple thing um, well probably the easiest way to explain is this one if I will put like this what do I have in this case? S square root of S is basically X cube, right? And uh, this one is Y cube. And this one is X minus Y. Now, this should be familiar because X cube minus Y cube is actually a multiple, multiple of X minus Y times X square plus X Y plus Y square. If you don't believe me, or if you don't remember this formula, just multiply this by this, and you will get this. 
x cube uh, plus x square y plus x y square minus x y square and minus y cube. So that would be what it is. Everything else would be reduced, uh, cancelled out. So what is this? x cube minus y cube divided by x minus y. It's this one. So my result is a divided by 3 and in parentheses I will have x square which is s plus xy which is square root of s s prime and y square s prime and this is the final formula for the volume of the truncated pyramid it's one third of of the altitude and uh, and then if you should multiply it by, by by this expression where s and s prime are areas of um, two bases of the pyramid well that's it um, I would uh, suggest you to read the notes for this lecture because they basically explain the same thing and uh, uh, and all the formulas and uh, transformations are there um, well basically that's it <laughs> thank you very much and good luck